Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to Raven's Real Talk. Thank you so much for being here. If you are new, uh, my name is Solo Raven, and I have created this show um, on my uh, Twitch channel that basically I use to talk about important topics that are either just important to me or topics that are uh, needing to be uh talked about more and I use this opportunity to uh, create awareness about these topics, educate myself, educate others, and hopefully create some kind of difference in people's lives so that we can use the discussion and use the new information and knowledge that we get through these discussions to look at our lives and look at ourselves and hopefully better our lives and better ourselves through self-reflection and introspection. So that's what Raven's Real Talk is all about. And as you can see, today I have a very, very special topic planned. It's the topic of infertility. And um, although these guests and myself have not experienced infertility ourselves, I felt like it was still a very, very important topic to speak on. And I will share with you all how this kind of this topic came about. It was supposed to be a family planning Raven's Real Talk. And I was trying to talk about the different types of family planning that uh, people choose to have in their lives, whether it's being child free, adoption, or people who struggle with infertility or natural pregnancies um, or you know, all of these different kinds of um, parts of family planning. But when I tried to find people who were interested in speaking on infertility, who have actually struggled with infertility, and how they either moved through it or got past it, or if they adopted or they didn't, whatever choices they made, I realized that this topic was actually a lot bigger than I um thought that it was going to be. So I decided to hone in on infertility and speak on infertility. And we will be diving very deep into this topic. And thank you all for being here. I appreciate you and all the lurkers who are just chilling in the back or have this tab open. I appreciate you all. I would like to introduce my scrumptious guest to everyone. This first scrumptious friend I actually made super randomly. I feel like I've seen them before, but I only started talking to them and participating in their stream and like checking them out once I was introduced to, to them through um, Salty Shug. I stopped by his stream one time or it was Tony's stream, one of their streams and uh, Cage Titan was in the a party and that's how I got introduced to them and Titan is so sweet, so kind and um, I want to say thank you to him and Photon once again for choosing to be on my Real Talk. I really appreciate it. Please help me welcome Caged Titan. You're on. <laughs> oh, it's me. Yes, it's you. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi, Shug. Good to be here. Thank you. Absolutely. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm so sorry. I completely forgot to let you guys know that I might be asking you. <laughs> So I know you stream Twitch things. Do you want to say anything else about what you stream or if you have any events coming up or anything? Uh, actually, I'm just kind of like a variety streamer at this point, which I'm assuming is what most Twitch singers are going to do now. <laughs> now that Twitch things is gone or is leaving. Mm -hmm. Hello, Slay. But uh, I have been playing League. Uh, because apparently that's the thing to do nowadays. Mm -hmm. I mean, with all the new items, there's it's it's almost like a new game. But I've been having a lot of fun. Good. I'm glad. I'm really glad to hear that. Thank you for being here once again. I appreciate you. It really I is. appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, a variety of music streams. Exactly. And second of all, I would like us all to give a warm welcome to my scrumptious friend, Photon, who I met through Twitch things, I want to say, and through Dare to Duet. And I think we've known each other for like, <gasps> I don't know, like a year and a half or so. And f cool, cool story is that he is the first person outside of Gabe, Mike, and X that I saw at TwitchCon 
we were standing um we were standing in line waiting for our pass and i see this tall this tall guy and i'm like bro that's photon oh my god and then i don't want to seem like a maniac and yell across the the hall and be like photon oh my god it's me hi it's raven so i just texted him like a creep and i'm like i see you <laughs> please help me welcome photon <laughs> Oh, yay. <laughs> Hello, yeah. Photon. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being I, here. I still can't believe it. Like, when you messaged me, I was like, I feel exposed. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I, I could see people. you and you couldn't see me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? And I know you have an event coming up. Yes, I did a we thing. Do. And pushed a button. Uh, no I'm idea what this does, though. Um, science, science thingy. Really I'm an oxymoron. Well. Um, we have a thing called Dream the Beat. It's a fuser and it's based on fuser. It's a community event where you submit a mix and then from there on we have like, you know, judges and it's all about creating the vibes. I'm actually doing this with Miss Fitfire who's in the chat. Mm -hmm. Fire and it's gonna be a totally new thing, a new game, a new era. You know, we, since Switch Singles kind of ending, kinda of like, let's just, let's give this a shot. Let's just see what vibes are gonna make. Um yeah, we have that on the nineteenth. And um, and are submissions still open? Yeah, submissions are still open until the end of the week on December 11th at 11, pretty much at midnight, around 11. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, Eastern time. But yes, I do a lot of variety. I am a photographer. I'm working on a photo project on December 27th with a music friend of mine uh, this coming month. And I also play trombone. I do a lot of variety of games. I do just dance a lot. Um, I'm just happy to be here. I'm also part of Team Heart Support. It's a, a streaming group on Twitch that advocates for mental health. A lot of these things, I think I'm, you know, I'm glad to be part of this conversation today. And, you know, just advocating for the good thing we got to do. Yep, absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you both for being here. I appreciate it. I know it's a busy time, especially being the holidays and with families. So thank you very much for taking out such a huge chunk of your day to speak with me, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah stop I figured you were delayed because that's happened to me uh, when I was a captain on Dare to Duet and er everyone would like laugh at a joke and then they'd be like silence. I'd be like, <laughs> so funny. <laughs> so <laughs> awkward. I was like, oh, wait a minute, something seems wrong here. I'm like, oh, that's why. Yeah, so I I've been there. I totally, totally, totally. Yeah, you've been right in. <laughs> Um, before we move forward, I would like to say hello to Johnston, hi to Habibi, and hello to Ninja. Thank you so much for that scrumptious resub. I appreciate it. Thank you for using your hard-earned money to support my channel. I hope you're enjoying being part of Team Raven and enjoying the emotes. And I will be doing 10 exercise reps as a way of promoting physical fitness and activity on my channel and saying thank you. So thank you very much for that. So glad to hear have everyone here. Hi, Karku. Nice to have you here. Thank you, guys. So usually what I do is I start off my um, real talk with just a general question so that everyone I can kind of gauge, like, what's everyone's view on the subject? So um, actually, before we move forward, let me do a quick disclaimer. Um, I do want to say that there might be some people who are here or lurking and might feel like, this is a predominantly female issue and why are there two males on the panel speaking about this issue it should be more females um, we actually did have another member uh any another guest um Tenepi. unfortunately she got called with work so she was unable to make it but luckily or thankfully titan and photon decided to stick around and continue with this topic so i appreciate you guys um, and I will also want to use this opportunity to say that infertility affects both men and women or male and female people. So this is a topic that applies to all of us. It's not just a female, uh, predominantly female issue. So if someone does feel offended in any way, um, I hope you use this opportunity to learn and, um, you know, absorb the awareness that we're trying to create on you know in this real talk and um we by no means are experts we're not medical experts we don't claim to be um as far as i know none of us have experienced infertility ourselves so although we are not very close with the subject itself and are speaking from our personal experience um 
one of the points I'm trying to make with this real talk is that even if we have not experienced infertility ourselves, it is still a very important topic that needs more uh, awareness to be created about. And we can still have opinions about the subject, even if we don't ourselves uh, experience or suffer from these issues. So what do you guys think infertility is? Or what comes to mind when you think of someone being infertile or someone saying they're infertile or infertility in general? Titan, you want to start us off? Sure. So before this talk, uh, my thought process was infertility was basically a, a woman who couldn't have kids. Mm -hmm. that, that was my whole thought process on that. Mm -hmm. And then actually doing research for this podcast that I've come to find out that it's actually just a couple who haven't been able to have a kid for more than a year. Yeah. And that to me, I, I never thought of it as in couples, right? I only thought of it as just a, a female who just couldn't conceive. So yeah, already just starting off the conversation. Hi goose. Uh, it's, it's helped me out just knowing more about it that's awesome thank you for sharing that how about you photon yeah pretty much just the same thoughts that you know when I, infertility comes to mind it's like the inability to have a kid or actually you know the first thing that came to mind was miscarriages for some mm. reason i don't know like i know they're not too close i think but just miscarriages you know the, the ability i mean ability to have a kid i think and yeah I'll, re, re, um, on his thought for over a year i think you know yeah. That's I can win. Yeah, that's awesome guys. Wow. Thank you. That that's that's kind of where I was with with this as well. Like I've always had um a different outlook on family planning. Uh I choose to be child free. And so because of all my experiences and, you know, the hate that I've gotten for my choices, family planning has always been a very interesting topic to me. And I've always been interested in knowing more about it. So um, I used to think that as well, that infertility, women who can't have kids. And then a few years ago, when I kind of like dive deeper into it, um, I, I found out that it actually affects males as well. And that is not talked about enough and um, in couples, that becomes a problem because even though one person might be super fertile, they're good to go um, because you're working together and your bodies are coming together to try to create this other life, it, you can run into a lot of issues. So it's really important that we take that into consideration when we're just leading our lives because there are certain things that we can do to avoid our increasing our chances of becoming infertile or, or suffering from that. Um, and that's another thing that we don't get taught or talked about, you know, in sexual health. I don't remember them talking about this ever. It's like an assumption that everyone can have kids and don't do this or you got pregnant. But what about talking about the other bit, which is there are people who might suffer from infertility. So I'm really glad we're talking about this. Well, I can't thank you guys enough for, for being here, really. It makes a huge difference. So thank you. Oh, yeah, this has been eye-opening for me, so I appreciate it this very much. Thank you. Um, all right. So now that we've kind of defined infertility, we've talked about how our uh, perception of infertility has changed by our research or learning more about this. Uh, let's move on to some statistics. So infertility affects about one in eight couples. Some sources say one in six couples. And the numbers uh, narrowed down are, it's about, I think like 6% of, 6 to 12% of married couples face infertility. So those are pretty big numbers. It's not like a 1%. It's like almost in the double digits at times. So why do you think with something so common that there aren't a lot of conversations around infertility like it's um, so com it's pretty it's uh relatively common why do you think that there aren't enough conversations about it i think it's because it's like hear no evil see no evil if you don't talk about it it kind of doesn't exist and then oh if it happens well that's where you kind of reach the roadblock so it's kind of like a honeymoon kind of thing until it actually happens it happens and that's why even though it's so common it's like you know you think it may not happen, may not happen to you, but it may actually might. But yeah, 
Yeah. Sorry. I mean, I, I honestly, I think it's a subject that's it's it's just hard, right? It's a hard subject to talk about. So especially for like families and friends, because there's this there the the stigma as you used in one of your questions. So it's almost like an embarrassment or like a shamefulness that oh I can't have kids, so I really don't want to to talk about that kind of thing because it makes me feel like I I'm not normal. It it to me it's it's one of the the big three in life, right? So you've got your money, your health, and your kids. Mm. So not being able to provide one of those, like it makes you feel less of a person. Ooh, that's interesting. And those are three that you uh, set for yourself in your life, or is that like a common three? So uh, for me, uh, my perception, at least as, as far as society goes, like those are like three big things for a person. That you're measured life. by. Right. So you're re- measured by your money, you're measured by whether you have good health, and you're measured by your family. So kids being one of them. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, I think it's the same thing. And I also think that the, you know, let me see if I do my math right, the 88% um, that it doesn't affect, right? If it doesn't affect you, you don't feel the need to talk about it. You don't feel the need to be aware about it. You don't need to, uh, you know, you or not even you don't feel the need. It's just hasn't come your way. You haven't experienced it. So like, you wouldn't even think, right? Um, that that's an issue and you know also all the pressure that we get from our family and growing up it's always like well wait till you have a kid and they do this and this to you like you know we've heard that from our parents like when we when we're mean to them or whatever it is so it's just always an assumption or or given that you will have kids that's just how it goes it's there's never this conversation of it's not a possibility so i guess when it does happen then there's that embarrassment and then there's that like oh god there's something wrong with me why would i want to talk about it And when I was trying to get more stats on infertility, I realized that it was kind of like when I did my real talk on infidelity, because I was curious about the stats on infidelity, how how many, like what percentage of couples cheat, whether it affects men or women more or less. And it was kind of the same thing in the sense that there weren't a lot of stats surrounding infidelity. And I thought to myself, it's probably because the people who do do it don't want to talk about it like that's a, a, a shameful part of your life that you're like I did it I messed up and I don't want to talk about it I don't want to bring it to light that's like my business my sin and I'm keeping it to myself um and it in a way I guess infertility is seen as the same thing it's like that's something I suffer with that's something that was a chapter of my life like maybe they did end up getting pregnant later but like I don't want to talk about it and maybe that's why the res- um infertility uh stats are a little skewed because think about it those those 12 percent don't include the people who are infertile and don't go to seek help they just cho- choose to be child free right so the numbers could be a lot more um i, I like that uh titan kind of brought in the stigma bit so why do you think that there is so much stigma around infertility photon you want to start us off yeah I think the reason why there's still so much stigma, it's, I think we're still kind of in the phase, we're barely breaking out of it, how, you know, how does this, bringing up sexual questions in media, like we're still kind of in that taboo stage, and I think we're kind of itching towards getting to that point of just talking about it freely, like, oh, I can basic conversation. And I think also the stigma around it, especially, you know, in the Hispanic community, because I, in in my my culture, if you will, it's like if you are, if you are infertile or that comes up, you are less than like, mm-hmm. like it's all about family planning down here. Mm-hmm. And it's like, why don't you have kids? Oh, like, and then the grandparents, but I'm getting old and you don't want kids. And there's just so much stigma around that. We're kind of like just afraid to open up Pandora's box because I think that's why, but I think we're itching towards getting to that bigger point of where we're just can really talk about it. But hopefully soon we can get out of that. Mm-hmm. Have you received any kind of pressures from your parents about you're getting older, what about kids and all this? Not really, but I kind of set that for my myself because my sister's getting married next year. And I'm kind of like, okay, once they have kids, I should probably start maybe looking at my options. Maybe. Mm. That's just a different story, though. But my my parents have been very, you know, as long as you live your life, 
you're happy, that's all that matters. And I'm fortunate to have that. And is that just for you? Is that for your sister as well? That's for my sister as well. That's for my sister as well. But they, my sister has been a big family planning person. <laughs> oh. Not, like, she wants kids. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's good that she knows that. Mm-hmm. A, lot, a lot of people don't realize that that is such an important thing to know about yourself. And I feel like if you're at that stage in your life where you're like looking for a long-term relationship, I don't think that you should be looking for a long-term relationship till you kind of have at least put some kind of thought towards family planning. Mm-hmm. Like, do you want to have kids? Do you not want to have kids? Are you open to it? Are you open to adoption? What if you're infertile? Like, really think about it because this yeah. is like serious stuff, guys. I, I don't know like, why people don't think about it. Involved. Like, even yes. if you're dating somebody, I feel like that should be, hey, so what do you think about kids? Yes. <laughs> uh, I don't like them. I love them. Okay. Okay. Right. That come up at least because that could have, you don't want to be with somebody and this be, oh, you don't have kids? No. Then you just end up presenting them and a bunch of a mess of soup and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. What about you, Titan? I think you're, I think Goose <laughs> wants attention. He does. He does. So I'm giving a couple pets right now. <laughs> No, I uh, I agree 100% with uh, what he's saying. So uh, I actually come from a Hispanic family myself. Oh, nice. So that is, I don't know. So that. That, is, that is a big expectation from my family. La and chancla. I think the chancla, yep, I got a couple of those in my life. <laughs> uh, but no, I, the, the stigma, I mean, it it's it goes back to what I was saying. So it's, it's in a common society. It's like an expectation, right? So if you're in a relationship, you get married, so that's kind of the point I'm at right now. So mm. that's and it's part of where why I, I I wanted to take on this conversation and and, and help give that opinion out there because I am recently married. So the next step, for me, thank you. You're welcome. So, so the next step to my my family is okay. You're married um, now. It's kids. Now you need to give us kids. <laughs> thank you, Goose. <laughs> um, and and they are they. My, my family is very old fashioned. So I, I get that, especially from my father. My father's like, hey, when you have kids, uh, my, my dad is 80 years old. Mm. So I have two brothers. They both have brought kids into the world. And now it's up to me. I'm the last. I'm the last one. I'm the youngest. And it's when so, you have kids, not if you have kids. Exactly. It's 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 an expectation. So now I have to tell my father, it's like, hey, look, that's something that we're thinking about in the along that lines. But Infer- infertility never comes up in those type of conversations yeah. because they're very one one sided and one tracked. So, for me and 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 my wife, mm-hmm. it it puts a stress on us already before we even try and have kids, because there's an expectation for us to provide that not just for ourselves but for our family and to keep our family going. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And was that something that crossed your mind earlier on like when you were thinking about family planning so as as far as infertility it it didn't cross my mind until i got married and until that that stress started coming together so because that is in my head literally the next step right so you're married now have kids but now you think about okay what if you can't have kids Mm. so then what so then now my wife and I, we, we've had that conversation. So obviously we've considered adoption and, and other things, but that obviously leads to uh, the, the next subject that you're going to talk about. Mm-hmm. But um, that, that's kind of where, where we are right now in, in our marriage. Yeah. It's really good that you guys have, have talked about it because it's really damaging, I feel like, in relationships when that stigma kind of finds a way to seep in. And let's say you are with someone and you are afraid to even bring up that possibility. Like, what if? So it's it's it, I think it shows that you have a healthy relationship where you can even have that conversation. And be like, babe, what if like what if I can't? And then they're like, oh, well, OK, let's deal with that. Like, let's talk about it. Right. Um, I think for me, the reason that there is so much stigma, it like dates my opinion is it dates like way 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 back because back in the day right especially when it came to women um like that was your that that was your role you provide heir to the king right um you 
are married off to like bring to uh kingdoms together or to lands together like a lot is riding on your ability to have children and back in the day even if men suffered in, from infertility it would never come up never it would always be like we've seen movies where they're like you can't give me a son like it, it's auto, everything's blamed on the woman and all any issues that if the kid is deformed or if she can't if the there's no pregnancy happening it's always the woman so that um i feel like that has kind of trickled into where we are now where our our worth is still tied to our primal um our primal need of reproducing and spreading and moving the 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 line forward and it can get damaging because that is the only that is the only path that we are shown that we need to walk on, right? And as soon as you start to stray or as soon as you don't fit that path, there's got to be something wrong with you. Like you, there is something wrong with you. There are so, I, I come from Middle Eastern and, and South Asian background. So even in my culture, um, there's a lot of stigma around infertility. Uh, if you're a man, you're definitely seen as less than like, wow, you can't get your girl pregnant. You get your 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 seeds are are you know X Y and Z weak and blah blah blah. That must mean you're a weak person. And for women, it's like oh God, she's infertile. Like it's it's seen as like this sad and depressing thing. Like who's gonna marry her? Who's gonna marry her? She can't have kids. And it's um very very sad when I hear that when I see that. Um, luckily, I don't associate with a lot of my extended family, not for like, because I have a grudge or beef or anything, but like, I just think maybe our mentality might not uh, mesh because they have grown up in a different part of the world. I have grown up here. Uh, my parents have raised us in a very different way as well. We're more religious than cultural. Um, and and religiously, you are not supposed to be looking down on anyone if they, you know, suffer from infertility or they're divorced or, you know, they were adopted or whatever, which are things that culturally people are looked down upon for. Um, so I feel like the, the, the stigma is real and it's there and it dates back to, to your purpose and um, your ability to, to spread and... Uh, repopulate reproduce and so it's definitely available it's definitely pre pre prevalent in culture and um the whole less than mentality i really thought and hoped that it would diminish as the time went forward and it, it has don't get me wrong so i will celebrate those small victories but the fact that it still exists in 2020 is like really sad <laughs> Because I feel like we've made so much progress in other areas, but we're, we're still stuck there. And um, I didn't realize how big of an issue this was. I was talking to uh, Titan and Photon offline when I was saying, uh, when I started doing my research on family planning and infertility, I realized that there were people on TikTok that are actually like hating on people who choose not to have children, who choose to be child free or to choose, choose to have an abortion because they can't have kids. So it's like a waste that people are giving up their kids or uh, not choosing to have kids. So it's it's a bigger issue than um, it's made out to be, guys. So this is why conversations like this are, are so important. And it's so important that I can't stress this enough that Titan and Photon are talking about it because I was looking, I was like actually hunting for men, especially who have uh, experienced this. And I found barely anything on YouTube, barely anything on, um, on TikTok. And I know it affects a lot more men than that. So thank you. Well, I, I, think, uh, I think there's like a, a man mentality. Right? So you're a man. So you're supposed to provide. Mm -hmm. So something like that men don't want to talk about that because they don't want to feel inferior Yeah, because they're the provider. They, they want to be the ones that actually help. So I can understand why you, you don't see a lot of that because they probably don't talk about it. 
yeah. because of that. Yeah. And I think it's made worse when their partners or, you know, if they're with women, they make them feel worse about it. Like you're not a man because you can't that that's your that's your role. Like you're supposed to, especially because we live in such a hypersexualized society where like men are expected to just spread their seed. Right. And if you can't do that bare minimum, are you really a man? Like that's how some people, I guess, have their standards of like what constitutes being a man. And unfortunately, there are people out that out there who think that way. That's just how life is. And I, and I hope that changes more with time. Um, but that leads me to our next conversation. So in couples, we already have established that infertility is common. So Titan, you mentioned that if you found out that you or your wife were infertile, what have you thought of, of doing? So the first thing that we talked about was just not, not being stressed, not panicking, right? So just because it can happen doesn't mean either A, maybe it can happen down the line, or B, there's, there's other options. And adoption was one of the big things that we talked about because we can have a kid, whether it's ours or whether it's someone who's out there that needs a home. So we've had that conversation. Um, and then we would seek medical advice at that point as well. So number one, you find out what the issue is, mm. see if the issue can be fixed, and then you go from there. Um, if it can't, then yeah, again, we have no problem with actual adoption. So we, we've had that conversation. And the thing that I respect about uh, my wife is that it's not a conversation where if all else fails or worst case scenario, right? So it's just something that we see as an option, mm -hmm. right? So it, it's adoption is not a less than seeking oh. medical advice isn't a less than yeah. it's, it's something that's there available to you. Right? Yeah, I like that. I really like that. That's awesome. That's so nice. Um, I know when I was with my partner, and I had told him that I don't want to have kids. And um, unfortunately, I think where he was in his life, he wasn't sure. I think he had always thought that he would um, have children. And then he met me and he's like, no, I'm set on you. I want you. And I was like, I can't bend on that. I'm sorry. Like, that's one of those things. I, I will be miserable. I know myself. I will be miserable. And I don't want to, like, take that away from you. So, like, we need to make a decision, right? Like, are we splitting up or, like, what's happening? And he was like... Uh, no, 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 you know, I, I've thought about it. And he took some time, he thought about it. And he's like, if it means like losing you or getting a kid, like I'd rather stay with you. And I was and he said that only issue is my mom is going to be asking and she's going to be like, when are you having a kid? Da, 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 da. And unfortunately, um, one of the things that he thought like he, this is this is how serious the family pressure is that he had to think about this as an option he's like I could just say that I'm infertile like it, it don't work and I, I you know at that moment it was just like wow I don't want you to say that like don't 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 tell your parents that but the fact that he had to use that as an option uh just shows that there is that pressure also on people especially I think um men in certain cultures that you just have to have kids like that's just the thing that as titan said that's just the next step you're married i don't understand why you wouldn't want to have kids um so i know for me if my partner was like we're struggling um i can't have kids i mean i wouldn't even be with someone who wants to have kids to be honest but if he if he came with that oh by the way also i know you don't want kids but i'm just letting you know in case you change your mind in the future i can't have kids um I think I know myself enough or the person I am today still doesn't want to have kids and I highly doubt that's ever going to change. So for me, it would be the perfect scenario if like he was infertile and it'd be like I, I would have no problems with that. So that's why I don't think I, I'm the best person to speak on this question specifically because it would not bother me at all. But I know for a lot of people, it could really be a huge issue. 
So Photon, how about you? You make it work. That's what's one thing I, I, I've learned. I mean, I've never had this experience, but mm -hmm. you know, it's a, it's a huge deal breaker. You can't have kids or, or whatever. What if you don't want to have kids? All right. Well, if you biologically can't have kids, you know what? But the options, there's a lot of, a lot of kiddos that are, you know, come from broken homes, broken families. Give them some love, give them some love, give them some love, like, bring them part of your family. And you know what? If there is, if there is a scenario where it's like, you know, I don't want to, then the love that you have for your partner should triumph all over that. Granted, you want to be miserable in this behind yeah. kids, but at that point, if you really love somebody, you will stick with them through everything you can. So whether if it's you don't have kids or you, you simply don't want to, you make it work. And that's the biggest thing we need to work on is just love one another regardless of what happens. That's what I think. Mm. So if your partner said, you know what, I I actually don't think I want to have kids, that wouldn't be a deal breaker for you. It wouldn't be a deal. It wouldn't be a deal deal breaker. No one necessarily, but it would be like, you know, I'd rather they say it early on so we have to think about it. So that yeah. way the relationship kind of grows into that. Kind of yeah. how after a while, like you just kind of get used to certain things. Say that early on. So that way, okay, because you're trying to think. So that way, five years later, oh, heart's broken. You know, you know that's happened. Um, like my, I, my mom was telling me about a, an incident. So my mom's in the medical field. And she said, you have no idea how many marriages I have seen fall apart because they didn't discuss this from the beginning. And down the road, 10 years, five years since the marriage, they're like, oh, yeah, I don't want to have kids. And the other person's like, what? <gasps> Wait just one second. I thought we were going to have a family together. So it's almost shocking that people don't talk about this more often. I, do, I feel very uncomfortable with the, we'll see when it happens. We'll deal no, with I'm it when it comes. Not. No, baby, no. I, I, I'd, rather, I'd rather, you know the fallout, quote unquote fallout, or just yes. ha it happens automatically. So that way it takes time to heal rather than you live in La La Land and you just ignore it. Yeah. My, my, my whole thing is like, I feel like everyone should have like a list of three to five like deal breakers if you have them. Limit it, limit it to like three to five like deal breakers. I must have this in my relationship. And that way it makes everything else easier to compromise. And you could just mention those three to five right from the get go, right? Yeah. Like, it's just, why didn't it come up in the conversation? Like, when you were saying, why didn't it come up in the conversation in five years? I mean, well, you could, I can see both sides, right? So I could see someone's perception and someone's way of thinking changing. Oh, so, yes. So, like, let's say you're married for three, five years. Okay. And you guys haven't had kids yet. And let's say it's 2020 and you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to raise a kid in this kind of world. Mm. Well, then at that point, you've got to have another conversation with your significant other, because obviously that significant other may have been like, oh, OK, well, let, I'm good. I'm good to have kids. But if you're having second thoughts, then now you have to revisit yeah. a conversation that you already thought was set in stone. Yeah. So it, it it's tough, especially if especially if you're married and you have to rethink that conversation. That, that, that I understand, 100%. Yeah. But I feel like when people just don't talk about it at all, it just doesn't make sense. It's such a huge thing. It's the same as, like, religion. There are certain people that have, like, a hard stop, like, I need someone who's the same faith as me, and other people who are like, ah, I'm okay with it. But then you get kids involved, and then it gets messy, and they're like, wait, I thought I was raising it with my faith. And they're like, no, but I thought I was raising it with my faith. Oh, I thought we we're doing a dual thing. And then the kids grow up like super confused. So these are, I think, things that people yeah. should be talking about like early for, for, on. Personally, I think those things should be like a thing where when you're talking with them, right? When you're dating, like just, you know, 50 questions. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Sweet. You got it down. Yeah. I think <laughs> you could even make it like a fun <laughs> thing. <laughs> Yeah, these are my. This is the contract, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and no, I, 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 I know that. it seems like that, but it's important. Oh no, I get that one hundred percent. Just because you, the way I looked at it, cause as I was getting older, not, not that it matters, but uh, I started getting to the point where, okay, if I'm going to date someone, 
just for a lack of a better term, I don't want to waste my time because I'm, I'm getting older yeah. and I want to find that person who's going to be right for me. Mm-hmm. So just like he's saying, you, you want to make sure that you have all those conversations up front yep. because at the end of the day, the one thing you can't get back is time. Yeah. I'm not going to spend a year, six months with somebody who has different viewpoints than I do that we're not going to be together in the long run. Yeah. So that, and that's one thing my wife will tell you is that uh, that that conversation happened. I said, oh, yes. I don't want to. We're not going to waste our time here. So this this is what's going on. I love that. I, I don't know. Like, I know we live in a time where people want to keep it mysterious and they want to be like, will he call me? Will he not call me? Will he text me or will he leave me on red? Oh, my God. The suspense. But like, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> I, I texted my wife 30 minutes after I got her number. A hundred percent. Like, I don't have time for people to play games with me. Like, oh, we just hung out. Oh, I can't text them too soon. It'll be like, I don't want them to think I'm thinking about them. Ugh, what? Because that could be so terrible. I don't, I don't get it. I've like, of course, you know, we've all been young and stupid and done very cringe things. Mm-hmm. Right. But yeah. the point is to grow and get better and yeah. not be as cringy or at least in not those ways. I'm still pretty right. cringe, but not in those ways. I throw some dad jokes out there. <laughs> Which is perfect, and I bet she loves them. And she's like, oh, this is so cringy, but I love you. <laughs> I get more eye rolls from her than anything. Yes. <laughs> They're full of love. They're exactly. full of love. Exactly. Uh, Sparkles Queen Michelle, thank you so much for being here. I missed your follow, but thank you so much for the follow. You see that raven that is you. You are now under my wing. Welcome, and thank you so much for that host. I appreciate it. Um, I did want to mention one other thing when we were talking about the fertility issues with the, uh, with our partners. So why do you think that there is a, a stigma itself around adoption? Cause apparently that's an issue too. So I was on TikTok and, um, I, I learned a lot from TikTok guys for real. And there, I, I saw a comment on someone's post who was saying that, if you are infertile and you um, proceed to be infertile for a long period of time and then you choose to adopt, there are people who look down on you who were infertile and conceived naturally because you weren't able to conceive naturally, but you adopted. So why do you think that exists when people have been in the same boat? They both have been through infertility. I, th- I think it's just a common perception. It, it's basically, hey, this is a part of society that expect you to do, so you need to do this. So for people who are adopting, it, it's more of a, listen, I, I want a family. No matter how I get it, I, I will. I want to be able to help provide and help be there for someone who is maybe less fortunate. And then maybe you get some common ground in that where it, you can't have kids. This person can't have a fam or doesn't have a family, and you kind of bond that together. And, and you you make a family with with someone who doesn't have one. Uh, that's that's the only thing I I can think of. I guess if I understood the question right. I don't know if I understood the question right. Um, I think you you and you you did understand half of it, and the other half is why do you think people who have also been through the infertility, but mm-hmm. have ended up succeeding and getting pregnant through infertility uh, after infertility, look down on people who are still are mm-hmm. infertile and then adopt? I got you. So basically, they, they think that they gave up and are oh. wanting to, wanting to have kids in another avenue. I guess that's interesting. It, it, yeah, is what I, what I think of in my head when when someone who was successful and see someone else who isn't successful change lanes and go a different path. You, well, gave, you up. gave up. You gave up on that path, so that's on you. You should have just kept going. But in reality, oh, those people don't have the money to do things like what IVFs or yeah. other things like that that may not be able to get the medical treatment. Or just decide that adoption is the better option at that point to save them the stress. So that's kind of where I I would see that at that point. That's really interesting. What about you, Photon? 
Honestly, I I'm trying to trying to process that question myself right now. <laughs> About why is there so much stigma with adopting? Pretty much. Mm-hmm. If you will. Well, I think it's mostly it goes back down to what you're talking about the man. Like it's, it's not your loin. I think that's what it ultimately goes back down to in common society. Mm. It's, it's, it doesn't come from your, yourself. It's someone else's. Therefore, it's like, do you still see that kid as your own, or you see that kid as your own, but it's not like that connection, that blood, and that that's where ultimately like that kind of teeter totters. I think, and you know, I agree with what you were saying how. You know, how come people that were infertile can now conceive? They still look down at it. Well, you know, thing is, just kind of just gave up, you know. But I think it ultimately goes down to, like, you know, it's not yours, as sad as that sounds. Yeah. And again, I can understand that from a Hispanic too. From so, a what's our, it cut out? Uh, a Hispanic household. So actually, real world, ex- real world example, my brother. Uh, when he was when he was 20 um, him and uh, his girlfriend at the time had a kid mm-hmm. uh, he found out it wasn't his so he decided that he wanted to keep the child and raise the child himself mm-hmm. from the chagrin of my family because my family was basically saying listen this kid isn't yours it's not your responsibility to have this kid you can still have other children. So I think there's a big stigma, like he was saying, around just having a child that's not yours mm. and, and and raising something that isn't yours. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, just from real real world examples, like I, I can totally understand what he's saying. Yeah. And, and yours is seen as coming from your cells in your body. Right basically interesting i think it it goes uh it kind of reminds me of the conversation of being a parent and being a biological mother or father in the in the adoption sense of like who then is the true parent is it the person who birthed the person and who has the cells or is it the person who was there for the kid when, you know, to feed them, clothe them, love them, care for them? It's sort of that same uh, conversation, which is really interesting. That unfortunately is still a conversation. Like, I don't, first of all, I don't understand why people are so concerned with each other's family planning choices. Like, let them live. But if there is that conversation i think that yes it dates back to it's not from me therefore it's not mine and um my kid is more mine than yours because you know you gave up and you chose to have someone else's kid you don't know what that kid is coming with and all of that which is so sad and uh actually still to this day there was a uh, my mom was telling me about this this uh guy who married a woman who was divorced so she already had some kids and the way that that story was I guess told to me it was like and he took them like his own it was like this amazing thing that he did which kind of goes back to they're not his and he still like took them under his wing which i'm not saying is not a good thing to do it's like beautiful but it should be like it should be a normal thing yeah it should be like the, just the common courteous kind thing yeah, that you do something like out of this world that just happened right right like yeah. i'm marrying you and you come with your own family and now we can be a family of course they're i mean we're not talking about like you're not my dad and we're not talking about all of that unfortunate stuff that people have to go through or or go through we're just talking about the principle of family and what family means and that doesn't always come with blood relations and blood ties and dna bonding and cells sometimes it's just choosing to choose actually i think that's sometimes more powerful because you're literally choosing someone who um didn't come from you but you're like i am making the choice to provide a home for you and make you mine, like make you part of my family and call you my own. And uh, I think this might be a side conversation, but I'm interested to see what you guys say. Let's say you adopt 
a kid, right? Both of you adopt. When or if is it a good time to tell them that they're adopted? Uh, that is a very good question. It also depends on how old the child is when you adopt them. Yeah. Because they may already have the common sense that, uh, yeah, you're not my child. Now, if we're if we're talking just straight shell baby, yeah, like yeah, yeah, but yeah, if we're talking straight baby, then at that point, I would have that conversation around the same time that they learn about uh, hereditary like traits in a person, because then they may start having those questions when they learn it in school. Hey, our eye color isn't the same, or our our hair isn't the same. Then at that point, you sit down and you can have that type of conversation with them. Because I, re- I remember that, like learning those things uh, in school. God, I can't remember how old I was. But uh, those were real questions. I-, I came back from reading those and looked at my parents like, all right, the <laughs> all right that's good. Eye color, okay, that's good. So I, I, I think at that point would be a, a good time to, to talk to them because it, it's not something that is just being shot at them. It's a natural conversation from what they're learning. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Photon? I think, and this might sound a little bit brash, I think, you know, when... So I work with elementary school kids, and I think around the time they're eight or nine, as soon as they can start, you know, talking more and understanding, like, oh, I know how to turn on the light bulb. I know how to do common things. I think that's when you should put the conversation in, like, hey, this is what happened. This is what happened. And I think, you know... I think, it's a better, I think it's a better age, and I, I agree with, with your, your method as well, Cage, um, as opposed to just waiting till their teenager years and like, oh my gosh. Right, <laughs> right. Just lay it on them. It goes back to my thing. Let let whatever potential fallout happen first. That way it kind of sets in. That way, you know, don't waste any time. Just let it know that, you know, this is what it is. But I'm going to love you. I'm still going to stick stick with you till the end of time. Yeah. I agree. Uh, I, I worked. Kids are smarter nowadays. Like, they get. Like, oh my gosh. They really are, and I feel like sometimes we don't give kids enough credit. Like, they're actually a lot smarter than we think. Like, they play games, guys. They know how to like manipulate you against each other if you're in a couple. Like, they know which. Like, I go to dad for this. I go to mom for this. Uh, I think mom would be a better fit for this question. You know, like they they are really smart. I had a six-year-old tell me, hey, you need to re-dye your hair. It looks pretty bad. And I'm like, okay. So, yeah. Like, so, so, kids, this is kids, why I can't have not, kids, guys. I would want to, like, a backhand it or something. No, I'm yeah. kidding. <laughs> no, but, but yeah. I'm yeah. have compre- comprehension. That's when you should kind of just lay it down on them. Yeah, I agree. I 100% agree. Yeah. I, I think kids can handle a lot more than we give them credit for. 100%. So Chevy says that's kind of mean, though, because what if it was a medical issue that they just can't or if they're getting older at that age where it might be too old to even adopt? You got to think about where you still um, whether or whether you will still be around when your kids are still young. It's sad and unfair if those who went through it before or even those who have been lucky look down on people who choose to, to adopt. Exactly. And that's why I found it so sad when I was on TikTok and I saw those comments um because first of all i didn't even know that that was a thing and then reading these comments of actual people who were saying this these kinds of of like hateful things to others it really broke my heart because i'm like you of all people should not be saying things like that because you know how hard it was for you to finally get pregnant you know the treatments you had to go through and like guys it's scary stuff like they give you like injections and stuff and it makes you feel sick it's like not a fun time okay um there's a lot of like hospital visits a lot of things that you got to go through so it's just sad when people do choose to look down on others because of that I'm adopted. I got adopted when I was two and a half. Oh, and when were you told, Sparkles? How did, when, when, yeah, that's interesting. When were you told? For me, I think I would make it known from young. First day of when they're adopted. Don't know how I would talk about it with them, but I definitely don't want them to find out 
much later in life. My only worry is that when they're older and rebellious, they'll use that information against us. You're not even my real mom. Oh my God. You are so right. That would really hurt. That would really hurt. Yeah, I don't know, man. That's like one of those things that I think I, about in relationships where I'm like, how do you move I forward like from things like that? I feel like that ends up happening naturally, probably. Probably. Like, like. I think that that's, I think that's something that that family is going to be prepared for at that point. Because that conversation is going to come up whether they're seven years old or 18 years old. And, and they know whether they knew at seven or whether they know at 18, they're still going to say, hey, you're not my real family. You can't really tell me what to do. I, I, think, that's just, I think that's just something that's going to happen. Like I would be prepared for that moment already. So that's something that people who are planning to adopt should prepare for. Mm -hmm. OK, oh, yeah, 100 percent. OK, yeah, if you're if you're going to if you're choosing to adopt you at that point you have to understand at that point you're no matter what you do no matter how much love care how much you spoil that child you are not flesh and blood mm. that doesn't make you any less of a parent but it's just a fact so eventually that child is going to bring that up to you and then that's when you prepare that conversation say look you may not be me flesh and blood but I do everything that I can to make sure your life is like you were my own. Mm -hmm. So that, at least that's the conversation I would have, like all these hypotheticals. I mean, I, I'd be like, you got a roof over your head. You got clothes on your back. Don't, don't right. tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Very sassy. Very sassy. Like, when, the, when does the parent get to say, you're not my real <laughs> <laughs> no. Tables have turned. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, so if you guys were choosing to, well, I, I, going back to the conversation, um, what you need to be prepared for, I think another thing you need to be prepared for is what if down the road, they're like, I want to go find my parents, my actual parents. That's, I think, something else that um, when you're adopting, that is a good thing to prepare for. Terrifying. Yeah. I think the question for me would be like, what if they're alive, whether or not what if they're somewhere i don't know like where the hell are they that'd, that'd be the question like you, you don't you don't want to like okay go find them and they're like a really really bad person like legally and stuff that, that'd be like my biggest fear yeah or they're I, in jail or something i don't know i, I agree with that 100 percent. like it's that's tough because you you want to help provide and help search for that right uh but then again there are parents out there that have said no you're your mind you don't need that information so that that's really tough um that especially tough. like especially like he was saying like if you come to find out that that person was uh, for lack of better term evil right so mm. they went to jail for something or or they they've done something terrible mm. like it was that's a, that's a tough conversation that, that that would be that's tough i've only experienced uh one person in my life that had a daughter that he had adopted and um he was like you know he had a conversation with her when she was really young like he did all of that like good stuff and he said just letting you know when you get older if you do ever choose to pursue your family you're more than welcome and the kid was like nah it's not like they wanted me anyway so I'm, I'm good but like that was i was a kid speaking like a damn adult okay and there are some kids that would just be like my heart is set i'm good with you guys i don't need extra things to worry about in my life but then there might be other kids who are like i'm just curious like what are the, what are they like i'm just curious right and and if you guys adopted would you go for someone who looks like you or you wouldn't really care that that wouldn't be a that wouldn't be a, a priority for me i mm. like just i i wouldn't I wouldn't care whether they had black hair or brown hair or blonde hair, or whatever. Right. Yeah. It, it, that that part doesn't matter. It's but then the being question there, come yeah. up would be, why didn't they want me? <gasps> if I was a doctor, yeah. why would didn't they want me, or what what made them give me up? That mm -hmm. that'd be something. I think the parents, the adopted parents, would kind of figure out. That's the next step. And, and maybe when you adopt them, you have that info. 
like, I hope why so. they, <laughs> yeah, like, was about why, to ask like, that. why they gave him up, right? So yeah. like yeah. maybe they felt like they couldn't provide for you. Maybe there's something else going on. So you so. would tell them. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. The the worst thing that you can do for an adopted person is lie to them. Like that that would be they already are in a place of mistrust yeah. whenever they find out that they're not they're not you, right? Very they're true. Blood. So lying to them would be the absolute worst thing that you could possibly do. Yeah, like it doesn't matter what age they are, don't don't lie to them on that right. stuff. When they right. question it, you give them the answers. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Man, those are difficult conversations cuz when my coworker had told me that uh he had re he had told her his daughter that I was so afraid of what she was going to say, but when she said that I was like, "Damn, she seems like she is a really strong kid. Like sh she's good. She doesn't need any extra like validation or anything." But of course, there are those people who are would want to know and would want to know why. Like why was it that bad to have me? And then that might cause some, you know, more internal issues in them. But I think transparency is the best. Like, you can't completely, you know, take away all of their insecurities that they might have because of being adopted or any of that. Like, there's no way you can completely, like, fix those parts of them. But I think the best thing that you can do is give them that love, give them that, try, try to earn their trust, right? And, uh, like, be the best parent that you can be for them. And hope and pray that that is enough for them. That's all you can do, really, you know, from your end. Thank you, Michelle, for joining the Discord. I appreciate that. Um, I agree with Photon. God. Um, what Cage Titan said made me emotional. Like, I'm just imagining myself in that position. It's tough, really. And he phrased it very well, too. There was a lot of empathy and compassion in there, which I think is highly needed um chevy asked if any of us found out that we were actually adopted what would your reaction be and volpine thank you so much for that raid i appreciate it you could have raided anybody and you chose me thank you very much i'll be doing five exercise reps for that who wants to start if you found you were adopted what would you do photon you want to start us actually it sounds it sound really sad uh, my father left me like many many years ago and I felt like at that moment, I probably would have like, I, I would have been like, I knew that already. Mm. Like I already kind of come from a broken family. So the idea of me in this scenario, finding out if I was adopted, it wouldn't really surprise me because they'd be like, oh, what else is new onto this? And, you know, I wouldn't necessarily freak out. It'd just be like, life happens, life happens. Mm. But I'd be okay with that because, you know, my family has been dysfunctional, but we somehow make it work paper mache it all yeah. still somehow i probably would be one of those kids that would say i appreciate everything you've done for me um i would want to find out who my real parents are not for the sake that i want them to be a part of my life because i've been alive this long and they haven't been a part of it so i wouldn't necessarily need them there mm. but i would like to at least know who they were and i think well and this is me finding out at my age right yeah now, yes right? Yeah, so yeah. it's 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 one of those things where i'm not gonna reward someone for lack of a better term that i'm here i'm doing well no thanks to you type of, type of conversation i just want to know i would just want to know who they are and where where they are because mm. my my family in particular my mother right now is making a family tree of generations upon generations he's already gone back to like 1720 at this point oh my god yeah like it's it's insane uh so knowing that i would want to be able to put that information in that book that she's making and say okay this is where oh. i come from so that that's that would be all it is that is really interesting. Wow. I think if I were told I was adopted, I think I would just be like, huh, okay. I mean, like, this is me just trying to, like, absorb it. I don't think I would be able to, like, absorb it enough to, like, take action. I think I would only be able to absorb it on a surface level because this is, like, 31 years of my life just, just being changed like that. So I think I'd be like, in this moment, 
I'm trying to imagine myself and I think I'd be like, okay, well, I'm good. I, I like my life the way it is. I'm, I don't want to add more stress to it. I have a medical condition that gets triggered with stress. I don't got time for stress and that's going to be stress. Finding them. What if they're mean people, right? I don't got time for that. What if they moved on with another family? So let me ask you this. What? How changed do you think your life actually will be knowing that you're adopted? Not like, much. What, what would change? Yeah. Right? Like, I don't think much would change. I think the only uh, thing that would change is, like, maybe I'll start, like, looking at interactions with families or comments from people like, oh, you guys don't look. As... And I'll be like, now it all makes sense. Because I get that a lot. Like, I when I, all of our my siblings are together, I'm the only one that, like, looks less Middle Eastern and more South Asian. But my dad is South Asian. So, like, it's bound to be like that. My sister looks more, like, Aboriginal. No jokes. My, my other sister and my brother look, like, Middle Eastern. So we all kind of got different looks. Whenever you mix races, that's what's going to happen, right? But I think that's the only thing that I would take time to digest. Like, oh, it all makes sense. That's why we don't the same like right that i think that would hit me but the rest i don't think i would want to it's a lot of work i'm sure well sparkles did you ever want to find your your blood uh parents biological sorry biological parents sorry i'm almost 28 29 i'll be 29 on may it will be my golden birthday next year oh i found out when i got older when i was nine or ten my goodness Wow. So no anger at your parents for waiting this long to tell you. Now that all makes sense. <sighs> that is tough. That's a good question. Anger at my parents for waiting long to tell me. I don't I could know. See, I, I could see some resentment, especially when, when you start getting to closer to our age, right? So your parents maybe they're not alive anymore your real parents mm. so you never had to ha you you could never have that conversation with them and say hey i'm here i'm doing well so i can see that being i can see resentment being there just for that reason mm. like why anything, didn't you just tell me right yeah and, and, and anything else at that point is the people that took care of you took care of you. Yeah. The re they may have reasons why they didn't do it, whether it's selfish or not. But at that point, they still took care of you. So that's that's what I think of in my head. But that would be the only resentment that I would have is if I ever wanted to talk to my real parents, being as old, I'm, I'm 33. But I keep I keep making it sound like I'm 50 <laughs> or 60 years old. And uh, now at my yeah. age. <laughs> yeah, at my, at my advanced <laughs> age no um but that's just how i would feel in that sense yeah I, I i i agree in the sense that i would definitely ask them like first of all why are you telling me now right and why didn't you tell me earlier i thought because we were raised like families don't have secrets da, 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 right so yeah i would definitely ask but i think i'd be too confused and it's such a huge concept to digest that I don't know if I have the capacity to digest. So it might just be like, huh, okay, interesting. Okay, like, I, I, I wouldn't know what to do with that information. I think so. And, and Photon, you said that it would kind of just be like, I'm not very surprised. Yeah, because my family is full of secrets. I'd probably tell them off and not talk to them for like around a month. And I'd be, all right, so now what? Are you like that in general? Like, do you I'm, not I'm, stay mad about things? I, 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 I don't forget. I right. Don't, I don't forget. I, I don't stay mad for long, but I will be like, that part that you mentioned will ever, forever hurt me. I'll lose like slightly, I'll lose a lot of trust for that person. I may love them, but I won't trust them ever again. Yeah, that's fair. And I think I'm the, um, I think I'm the same way. I think I'm the same way. What about you, Chevy? What would what would you do? Or a Brandon? Anyone else in chat? Like if you if that happened, that's a great question, by the way, Chevy. Thank you for asking that. I won't lie; it has crossed my mind sometimes. What if? But I, I don't think I'm um, adopted. Um, so why do you guys think that fertility issues are mainly seen as a woman's issue? Do you think it's because of the their their biological parts? 
and like that's where the baby comes from so that's why it's seen automatically as a I, female issue i think media i think the media honestly i think the media and like you know the society now it's like how when you watch commercials kind of how why some cultures find certain women or men attractive it's we've kind of been trained or you know this is what we've been exposed to for so long or in this case you know infertility like it's always been kind of like a woman's issue because the media and how like the news and stuff but i feel like mm. we don't know much about the other side of it. it exists but it's like that just seems to be the one we're always been focused on that's what i think mm. what about you titan it's to me it's just the something that goes through the tests of time so from way before us it was the woman's job is to have kids cook clean and that's it so when it comes to infertility if the mm-hmm. woman can't provide the child the one job that they had then that's where you start running into those type of issues uh, and then kind of like what he was saying like there's all this information about women not being able to have kids, mm. not as much information on men. So I agree with that statement 100%. But it, it's a societal perception that if there's any issues, you go to the woman first because it was the woman's job to do that. Mm. Which goes back to our original conversation where we said that even if there are men who are suffering from this or struggling with this, they're not going to want to talk about it because it makes them feel less than or they're made to feel less than right um unfortunately i i I think that's the same i i I agree with that as well and i think it's also because of the biology it comes from the woman which probably means that it's more of the woman than the man um and so if there's any issues it must have something to do with the woman and something we didn't discuss is what are some things that causes infertility in men and women so something i found is um for men it could be like genetic disorders hormonal disorders and things like that and things that increase the risk of infertility in men is age for men and women smoking being overweight That was a thing for men and women as well. Use of marijuana, apparently. Excessive alcohol use. So all the things we're told not to do as kids. (laughs) Um, Exposure to testosterone. Uh, This may occur when a doctor is prescribing testosterone injections. Interesting. I heard one thing, and I don't know if this is a conspiracy theory or something. Mm -hmm. Like, I heard if you put a laptop on your lap that can kind of do some damage to your area i think oh I that's interesting because of the heat maybe probably yeah like the constant heat around that i'm not sure if that's true but that's one thing i've heard in the past is there radiation from there because i know here it says exposure to radiation that probably could be that's around the same thing maybe so like the battery in it maybe getting yeah maybe like that's interesting on it yeah i didn't know that one myth that i would like to debunk is um masturbation over uh, uh, excessive masturbation causes other issues but it does not cause infertility so i do want to say that that's what i saw on different forums and different websites so that does not and and it's not even in the list here uh frequent exposure to the testes to high temperatures that could be it yeah uh high temperatures such as um confined to a wheelchair through a sauna or hot tub i didn't know this Wow. Exposure to certain medications. Okay, that's fair. That's exposure to environmental toxins like pesticides, leads. Yes. So that we just have to be careful with what kind of food we're eating. Um, In infertility in women, um, same thing in the sense of like there's like menopause, ovarian insufficiency, all like things with the ovaries, cancer, of course. Um, fallopian tube obstruction so more like medical related issues um, or any kind of um, abnormal uterine contour okay so maybe something with the lining containing fibroids but what increases risk of infertility for women is 
very similar to the men age uh, and the reason aging is important for women, and that's why a lot of people say like, oh, my eggs are not fertile anymore, whatever. She has a smaller number of eggs, the older she gets, her eggs are not as healthy, just like anything with age, they, you know, lose strength. Um, she is more likely to have a miscarriage. And she's more likely to have health conditions, right? As we get older, we are bound to get health conditions and that would affect the fertility smoking excessive alcohol use weight gain physical or emotional stress so that is something that i found different between the risking uh, increasing the risk of a woman's infertility and men's so for women if they are under excessive stress or excessive physical stress emotional stress that could result to amenorrhea which is absence periods Yes, that has happened to a lot of women that I know, um, and that could mess with the fertility. That's interesting stuff. I didn't know that. Um, and of course, going back to our original definition of fertility, so it's recommended that if you can't get pregnant after six or months of trying, uh, six or more months of having unprotected sex, that's when you should consult with a doctor and your chances of having a baby after 30 usually starts to decrease it's interesting didn't know this stuff <laughs> good to know uh i heard that too even a cell phone in your front pocket oh yeah see the heat so chevy says i wouldn't be mad at my parents for waiting this long to tell me but i do think things might get weird a little for a bit like knowing i'm not flesh and blood yeah, I, I, I'm i surprised you guys think that you would be able to even like conceive it and, and digest it. I think it's such a foreign concept to me. So digesting it would be very, very difficult. Um, so this is something I think all of us have dealt with. Entitled grandparents. So <laughs> what would you say is some advice? What What's some advice that you guys would give people who are dealing with families that are really interested and invested in their sexual health and their family planning and they're like when are you going to give us grandkids what just one maybe just one what, what would you guys suggest that people say or do <laughs> um i'd say i'm not getting you pregnant so that's <laughs> <laughs> i'm not marrying you now for real though like who knows when the time's gonna happen like my grandmother she has has alzheimer's i don't think she'll even see mm. my sister's kids or my future kids or whatever but i just think you know just ignore them ignore them and if they really loved you they will love you kids or without kids yeah it, yeah i think for for me my family has always been a little different from the norm uh, so from a very young age, I knew I didn't want to have kids. My other sister knew she didn't want to have kids. And the other one was like, huh, I don't know. And my brother is more like, probably, right? So we all kind of like vary along the spectrum. And so when my parents started this, the conversation of when you have kids, when this happens, when like we, we kind of shut that down, like way early on, we were just like, listen. It's not going to happen. And my parents really know that we don't want to have kids. <laughs> so they, they try not. Well, my dad is a little still weird about it. But my, my mom knows. Um, and I think it helps that my mom herself didn't quite fit the norm at her time. She was always very much interested in becoming a doctor. And she was very invested in her studies and learning and growing. So like having kids was the last thing on her mind, right? Uh, so she understands, she gets us, which is really helpful. But I have seen them do that with my sister who got married. So when she got married, um, I think like a couple years in their, into their marriage, they were like, oh, so like, when, when are we going to have a little, little one coming around? And my sister and her husband, I think, I can't even remember how they reacted, but I, I've definitely heard them talk about it. I would suggest having a transparent conversation with your parents to just kind of lay down the law and be like, this is my business or this is my life. Or, you know, if you don't want to have kids and they're pressuring you, I think a good thing to tell them is when you guys pass away, I'm the one who's going to be stuck taking care of it. 
or he's going to like my, my partner or, or she like whoever your partner is, they're going to be stuck taking care of it. So if you already know that I don't want that, like, do you want me to be happy or unhappy for the rest of my life? Do you want me to feel stuck? Right. Um, and I think that if parents truly, you know, deeply love you and care for you, they will understand that they're kind of being selfish and, and asking for their own enjoyment and their own pleasure of having a little you to take care of or look after. And sometimes it's just curiosity, like, I wonder what my my daughter's kid is going to look like. I wonder what little one's going to bring into the world, you know, just selfish. I do think selfish. it stems from the empty nest syndrome, if you will. Like, since I want more time with my kids, I also want, I want you having a grandkid can kind of extend my lifeline, make me feel kind of young, maybe have like a purpose. Mm. That's what I think. Ooh, a purpose. Yeah, like you that know. is really interesting, especially if your partner has passed away. Like, God forbid, your mom or your dad's like other half has passed away, and they're kind of just home, and like you're living your life with your husband and your or your partner and your kids, and they're kind of like home alone. If they have a grandkid, you could send them over and spend time with them. They yeah. could cook for them. And oh, that is like, really interesting. Know, my life has a meaning again. And, you know, mm, that's so I'm sad. helping my, my, my kids, my, my kids out, but also I'm also, you know, keeping, keeping busy and learning new things, I'm learning how to read again, learning how to, you know, do things I didn't uh, do. I never thought of that. That's actually really sad. Now I feel like such a dick. <laughs> that's sad. It's so true, though. Like, it's, this is real shit, guys. This is like real because I just started thinking about like, um, like let's say you know i, I don't want to have kids my sisters want to have kids and hopefully my brother if he if he wants to he has kids but if he doesn't want to like and my mom or my dad like pass away one of them pass away and then they're just like home alone like, like it's true like what do you do when you get older if you don't really like my parents the way that they have lived their life is that they like literally dedicated their lives to their kids like that that those are the kind of parents i have so their hobbies interests um partying like going out going on cruises whatever like they ne they just stopped doing all of that i'm not saying that's healthy i'm just saying that's what my parents did so like we try to send them on dates we try to send them out and they're like will you guys come it'll be so nice oh. like they're all like that right so i understand that damn that was deep photon that like I, t I got that. I felt that. Thank you. That's a very interesting perspective. And that kind of makes me feel that if I'm choosing to live child free, then for me, this is a message to myself. Like I have a duty to make sure that my parents or whoever is left behind does have something to keep themselves occupied with, whether it's a hobby or it's a new skill, some kind of purpose. Thank you for that. that. That's been one of my it's biggest beautiful. fears of getting married is that I don't want to wake up one day and my wife is dead in front of me or vice oh versa. That's one of my biggest fears. That's why I think about even that when I'm a grandfather or something that happens, I don't want to be alone, you know, after my assuming other passes away. I don't want them to feel the pain or vice versa. Yeah. Thank you for that. That was such a, a beautiful thing to reflect on. Thank you. That was really good. Yeah. That's really good. Um, what about you, Titan? Hmm. It's hard to have a it's hard to have an answer after that. Yeah, right. Uh, but I I agree one hundred percent with him. Um, and I would I would say maybe not even that they're being alone. Maybe they consider it a second chance or a third chance, right? So they get a chance mm. to raise a child again to maybe two different standards that they had the other kid. Like do a and, better job that they didn't get to do with us or something. Right. And and that's uh, my family had three boys. So it's it's one of those things where my my uh, my oldest brother has a has a girl. So now it's like a a chance to raise a girl when they never had to. So they happen to live in the exact same state. So they are with those kids all the time. And I think about that and what he was talking about actually made me think about my childhood like my father he was a very much a, a man who worked as much as he could to provide for his family so mm -hmm. no baseball games no 
no t-ball mm. none of those extracurricular activities he was there so feeling like they may have yeah like mrs spitfire said feeling like they had a do-over mm. so that they could try and raise this child again to the standards of what they have with or without your knowledge because you would want to say that your grandparents spoil the kids but yeah. they also may be teaching them things that you don't necessarily know about in those type of senses that is a very interesting um way of looking at it as well because i don't know how that would make people feel that maybe didn't have the best time right mm -hmm. with their family growing up and then they see their kid being treated the way that they wish they could have been treated by their parents and that i feel like that right. could cause some friction there's something oh, yeah. i saw on disney channel back in the day What's it called? I'm old. I'll know. It's a really sad movie. It's called The Scream Team. The grandfather dies at the beginning of the movie. And at the end, yeah, the, the guy, the grandfather, like, smashing pumpkins and stuff. And the idea is, like, Tommy Davidson or Sammy Davidson, whatever the hell his name is, had to retrieve his soul in the house. And, like, two kids, the the actress from Thor The Dark World comes out in it. Well, anyway, the oh, father's, this looks like, familiar. the father of the kid's, like, my father always didn't like me. He didn't like me. At the end, he talks to his dead father, like in the ghost form. He's mm -hmm. like, "I wanted you to live the best life. That's why. I, that's why I did all these things for you. But I thought you never loved me. I did. But I wanted you to be, be the better man. That's why you were talking about this. It reminded me of that. Mm -hmm. Like, how just wanting to raise a better life for your kids. Therefore, that's why they were. He was so fun with the grandkids because he mm -hmm. wanted a chance. You know, oh, that's to tough. have a different look. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, that is is definitely tough. I mean, I ha can't say I've experienced that with my nephew. Like, my parents are pretty uh, regular. Like, they seem pretty normal with my nephew. But I'm I'm pretty sure if I had like a really bad upbringing and a bad time with them, and then I saw them being like super sweet to my nephew, or like living in a household, um, people I've I've met people who whose parents never allowed them to have sugar. It's a real thing um, because they're in the health industry and whatever. And then if they see their grandkid, like the, their nephew or, or their or their daughter or whatever, being given spoiled with all this cake and stuff and like enjoying that, that might like hurt you some type of way because you're like, bro, I was there one time too. Like I wanted, I, I was a kid just like that. So why is it okay for him or her to have it and not me? So yeah, that is a, that is really interesting. If, if if we choose to have kids guys just well if you guys choose to have kids guys just all we can do is like do the best that you possibly can and w there's always going to be regrets i feel like i don't i'm sorry this turned into like a parenting stream but i feel like there's always going to be regrets right like as kids we always look back and be like well they could have done this better and this better and this better i'm not going to make the same mistake and then your kids are going to say the same thing about you. Like there's all there's that's just the cycle. That's just how it goes. There's always going to be you could have been better. But as long as you know that you did the best and you really tried to do the best, um that that should be I guess sufficient. And like Titan was saying about like the baseball games and stuff. I think that kind of stuff is is important. Like I, I don't know how that made you feel when he wasn't there at at those it's it's more self-reflection so when i was a child when i was a kid they, why isn't my dad showing up but now now that i'm older and it's like i you go back and you try and put yourself in my father's foot or in someone's your parents footsteps and you you understand that what he was trying to do yeah. was try and give you a better life yeah he, he sacrificed his time and his energy to to make that happen yeah it, sometimes it just the energy doesn't get to you, but the message did. Yeah. And and it's nice that you were able to kind of put aside your feelings and actually able be able to reflect on it like that with your adult brain functioning. Because sometimes when it comes to our parents, we become children again. And everything that they've done or did that hurt us um, 
we become a kid again when when looking at those things. So it's really hard sometimes to detach yourself and be like, no, I need to look at this rationally with an adult brain of who I am today and like reflect on those things. And I think that's the only way that you can really ha- try to have some kind of relationship with your family um, or your parents in particular. Because if we stay viewing things through our kid mind or like who we were when we were kids, um, we will always feel like we were treated unfairly. And th- this is, I'm not talking about people who like genuinely were like treated unfairly. Like you have every right to feel that type of way. But I just mean there's some things that, you know, are unreasonable that when we get older, I hope we can look back and be like, no, nah, I was just being a dick. Like I was a bad kid. That's why they were X, Y, and Z because they just did not know how to handle me. Right. Yeah. This is such a great conversation. Thank you guys for that. Um, So with grandparents, how would you deal with that? So if your parents or her parents were all up on you about kids, um, and let's say there was that infertility issue, like, would you talk to your parents about that? So honestly, it sounds bad. Before this conversation, I was definitely in the same boat as, listen, uh, we'll try, Mm -hmm. or maybe there's something else going on. I wouldn't come out and confront them and say, listen, maybe we don't have, maybe we don't want to have kids or maybe myself or my wife is infertile. I would just, I would give them that tentative. Yeah, we'll, we'll try. We'll be trying. Well, I understand that you want kids, but we're, we're trying mm. and, and maybe not bring up the fact that someone was infertile. And Ooh, at least that's, okay. that's, that was really before this conversation. Mm-hmm. Now, the, the problem is, at least on my side, is my mother and my father both have different ways of thinking. So how I would approach that conversation with my mm-hmm. mother compared to how I would approach it with my father are two different things. Because my father is very much that man type of mentality. So if I were to tell my father that either myself or my wife were infertile, I feel like it would hit him harder than it would my mother. Because my mother is more understanding of situations. Mm. Or I, I think my father, just the way he was raised and the way he tried to raise me, the expectation to have a child, that, that may be harder for him. Yeah. Do you think he would look down on you for not being I don't able nec- to? Okay. I don't necessarily think he would look down on me. I would just think that, and it, honestly, it helps that I have two older brothers and they both have kids. Yeah. So the weight of the world isn't on me. Right. Right. So, right. I see what you're saying. Male. Right. So yeah, yeah. The, the the line is going to continue with with or without my help. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in, in those type of situations, like it's I don't know, talking to my dad, uh, he's he's a very stubborn 80 year old man. Mm-hmm. So it's it would be a, a harder conversation to have with him. Mm. Yeah. I wonder how this fares for people who are infertile and they are in a, they're, they're they're an only child. They're the only son in the family. I feel like that would actually probably make things so much more stressful for you and your partner and contribute more to the infertility because you're under this pressure. And like every time you're trying to have sex, that's what's thinking like must perform, must do it well, like try to get as much out as possible. Like all these things I'm sure are going through. I actually don't know how it works. Like I don't know if like maybe not releasing for a few days will increase your chances. I don't know. I'm not a doctor, Um, but I'm sure like there's all of these things going through your head. And I feel like the other thing that I find that I personally would not discuss with people is we have begun to try. Like, I would leave it open-ended, like how Titan said, like, yeah, like, we're interested. We, we we're, It's going to happen eventually. But I don't think I'd be like, make that announcement. You know how some people make it as an announcement? Mm-hmm. Bro, that is stressful. Yep. That, no. Mm-mm. That's stressful. Because then people are going, anything, anything? It's been, oh, it hasn't so been like two months. Huh? Yeah. And yeah. that. And I feel like it's so strange to be like, we're trying because, like, automatically people are going to be like, oh, okay, so they're, like, getting it on more often now instead. Like, I don't want to know that. That's weird. <laughs> but but that that's the stupid, that's the weird thing about our, our society that, like, that's suddenly become everyone's business, right? When are you going to have a kid? 
do, do people forget that you need to have sex to have a kid? So you're basically asking, like, when's the next time you're going to have sex? I hope you're ovulating. I hope things are good. Hope he's good and you're good. Like, that's so personal. That is so personal. Which actually brings me to the next question, which is a perfect segue. Um, what are some phrases and questions that you think people need to stop asking others around family planning? And especially to people now that you now we now we know that people might be struggling with infertility. So keeping that in mind and trying to be more empathetic to people, what do you think are questions and things that people should stop saying to people? around family planning. I think one of the worst things that you can say, and um, this is this is especially to people who have had some kind of miscarriage by infertility, is at least you weren't very far along. Oh. That's something pretty shitty to say. Yeah, that's a big yikes. That's a, that's a big yikes, yes. I will completely be transparent and say that when I was an immature youngin, I have said in the past that if you lose a child, at least you can make another one. So I have said that, but that's what that's what growing's all about, guys. We say some cringy, stupid shit when we're younger that is completely insensitive and a terrible thing that I've actually never said to someone in person, but I have said it in a conversation like, I don't understand what the big deal is. You could just make another one. Have said that. And I think that also ties in my detachment with wanting to have children. I never understood like the value or not the value, the the heart that goes into like, that's my child. So I never understood it. Right. Um, but yeah, don't say that. The adults say that adults say that to people like, you know, at least now you know that you can have a child. That means you can. That means you can do it again. Yeah, I think there's an ignorance there. Right. So mm -hmm. a lot of people mm -hmm. that they don't they don't think about those type of things it, like infertility isn't something that's on their mind so mm -hmm. they do ask questions like that so like when you guys can have try to have kids or they may talk about somebody else's pregnancy that someone else right now is pregnant like oh well this person's pregnant again or did you see the announcement for this family mm -hmm. so they don't necessarily understand that hi buddy <laughs> sorry dog doggo wants to play um but the, in the guy sense the guy point of view too same thing so it's like i'm the kind of person who when i was younger I jokes like oh i guess this guy's shooting blanks or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, like things like that yeah. like it's it's just the the insensitive comments brought on ignorant brought by ignorance yeah all right i'm just gonna really quick show you what i'm working with here oh Goosey. my god hello oh my god <laughs> Okay. All right, and we're back. <laughs> it's a very pretty, pretty uh, companion you have there. Um, yeah, I, I think that that the the conversations around that are, are so are are driven by ignorance, and also it's weird that being able to get pregnant is something to flex. Have you seen posts like that where people flex the fact that they're so fertile? They're like, oh, yeah, I'm pregnant again. Mm -hmm. He put it in me again. Mm -hmm. That's weird, bro. That That's taking it back to back in the day when your purpose was to, like, have kids. So, yeah, I don't think you should be proud of that, to be honest. I think you should be grateful and happy that you were able to conceive and you have a healthy baby. But that's why I always found it really strange when people, like, make things super public and they're, like, really bragging about it and saying like yeah look at my kid and look at this and this and that like social media is so bad for that because i you forget all the people that are looking at your posts that are struggling and have suffered seven miscarriages four miscarriages they get good news they do the treatments and they're like oh my god we're positive and then they lose it again and again and the the stress that it puts on your relationship the exhaustion that you must feel the fatigue the disappointment, the looks that you probably get, from, that you feel like people are looking at you and looking at you as less than, even if people are not. Um, that's why I feel like people need to be so conscious of the things that they say, the things that they post. Family planning is very intimate and it's turned into this like show, this charade that you like put on for the world. I do better than you kind of contest. Really. Yeah. And um, I wish more people 
thought about those things, you know, before they flaunted it in front of everybody else. What about you, Photon? What are some things that you think that people should kind of refrain from saying or... Honestly, I don't really have too much to say because I don't. I'm usually on the defensive about it. I don't really like say any. I don't really say anything. Have you honestly. heard anything being said that you're like that is really questionable? Not really, because like usually if people around me, it's like it's the actions. It's the actions. Now people don't really say anything. It's like all about social media. Going back to what you were saying, social media posts and you know, hey, look, I'm getting married or hey, I got pregnant kind of thing. And it's never people don't really say it. They say it in a very condescending way if that makes any sense mm-hmm. like it's it's they don't say it directly but it's obvious they're doing this to kind of hurt you or kind of shame you mm. that, that's what I've heard. like a nonchalant type of yeah way mm-hmm. yeah. yeah social media is a really good way to make yourself make yourself feel bad yourself and that that's really tough the social media was supposed to be about connecting with people now it's turned into this kind of like you're saying showing off and and parading what you have that other people don't and yes. kids happen to be one of them so yes. showing off that baby announcement or showing off the <laughs> gender reveal like the, those type of things now that i'm thinking about it and now that we're having this conversation i, I look at that other side yeah because I, I have a uh actually i have a really good friend um mm-hmm. uh, I've been married for a while, um, and they haven't had kids. And I can't, Goosey, come on, buddy. I can't bring it to myself to ask them. Wait, wait sorry, say that again. Is it? I, I have a good friend of mine who uh, has been married for a little while who hasn't had kids, and I never had a conversation with with this friend about like, what they wanted to do after they got uh, they got married, because mm. in my mind. Next step is to have kids. But I don't know how to have that conversation with a really good friend because I don't know if they're infertile or if they don't want to have kids or if they're just trying to wait longer. Mm. And it, that's really hard for me because I feel like I'm missing out on an aspect of a really good friend's life. Ooh. So that, that's that's another thing I think about. And I think that's a different point of view that sometimes maybe friends are just asking not to be nosy, but actually like they want to be involved in that aspect of your life regardless of how personal it truly is but you kind of want to like be there for whatever it is that they're going through if that's the next chapter so that's actually a really interesting point you both identify as males so in in your circle of let's just say you have males that you hang around with is that something that you don't discuss like your stance on kids like when you you know when before you were married or when you were just dating your girl was that something that came up in your conversation because i i can tell from personal experience like most of my friends like i know where they stand with kids like the girl the girl the females that i know i kind of know like if i'm close with them i know because that's something that comes up in a conversation you know so is it less um of a topic that's discussed, like family planning or like what's happening for your future, what you're planning to do with you and your girl. Um, it's kind of like it's we kind of always just assume. Like when I had my group of friends, we kind of he had his his girlfriend, and we kind of knew like he's gonna get married to her. And his always answer to me was that I want to bring a kid in this world, but I don't want this kid to like question life like I am. Okay. So we all kind of had like similar answers to each other. We kind of just assumed we never really talked about it too often. It was like, once you said it, it's already out there kind of thing. Mm. We didn't really talk too much about it. It was just like a non, not like a non-issue really. Mm-hmm. We just kind of never had the need to bring it up really. Yeah. I, 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 I can feel that too. So like the, the typical guy kind of like don't happen when it comes to yeah. Like, what are you planning on doing when you're married or are you guys wanting to have kids? It's not really a conversation that comes up, but that's a society thing again, right? So, Because the assumption is yes. Right, right, right. Oh, so that that's, not a, that's not a conversation that guys have. But when you think about it, especially if I use myself as an example, for me, like infertility being a big fear of mine, like having that emotional support from another guy may be something that you want, but you both don't know how to tackle the conversation. You, you don't know how to bring it up. And your friend 
can't bring it up or feels like they can't bring it up because it's so personal. So how can a friend bring it up or create an environment where it can be brought up? <laughs> that's 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 the real question. Without actually coming from are you guys wanting to have kids? I personally haven't been able to think of a conversation because that my, that friend that I was talking about, I've literally been thinking about that for at least a year. Oh my about, God. About how to, to bring that question up, but I don't want to bring up anything that they don't want to talk about because at one time you want to be there to support them, but the other side, you want to be considerate of their feelings and what they're doing. So. If someone has the answer for that, I'm down to listen to it. Yeah, that is a really, really good question. I, 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 I don't even know how you would go about it. I mean, <laughs> there, the way to go about it, I guess, would be like if you're ever walking in the mall and you see a little one, you could be like, "Bro, would you ever want one?" Like, kind of make it casual, like a casual thing, so it's not even like a thing. Like, I want to talk to you about something. Um. <laughs> Cause I, I, I've been in situations with friends where like they're kind of gawking at the kid and they're like, Oh my God, it's so cute. So I'm like, oh, okay, I already know what kind of person you are. Like you really want kids. Right. Um, and then they'll see my reaction. And they'll be like, Oh, what? It's not your thing. I'm just like, I don't get it, man. I really don't. So like, that's kind of my, their way, I guess, of gauging me and I gauge them. Or sometimes I think I've been asked one or two times, like, would you ever want one? But it was said in a casual way. So it wasn't even made like a serious topic so i guess that's one way like make it so casual even though it's not casual but make it casual so that it they're like less afraid to talk about it but it gives them the opportunity to at least open up about it and then you can gauge their response how willing they are to talk about it because they could either be like nah not not my thing or they could be like well and then we'll see where it goes you know from that i guess that could be one way that's something I have myself on mute I can understand that the the obstacle that I have with oh live, you're cutting sorry different... oh sorry so the obstacle that I have with this particular friend is they live states away so it would either be a phone Damn. call or a text message <sighs> which again that's not really something you bring up in a, a phone conversation oh by the way <gasps> unless Unless I start talking about my wife and I, but again, that's where insensitivity comes in. You just don't know. You don't know. You don't know. Unless you can like totally lie <laughs> and send a picture of a baby and be like, yo, my wife and I are putting bets on it. What do you think? Is it a cute baby or not baby? Like, what do you think? <laughs> would you would you have a baby? Is it a cute baby or not baby? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Better go to baby. <laughs> I mean, I, I'd probably do something like that. that. That's where I do play games. Like, if I'm trying to get yeah. information out of someone and I'm like, I'm really trying to be sensitive to your feelings, but I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> that's where games do come in. But if you figure it out, boo-boo, let me know, because that is a yeah. tough situation to be in. Yeah. And, and I, I don't even know how um, you would go about it, especially when they live far away. I hope you're able to, and, and and you know what's what's worse? I hope it's not a situation where they are looking for someone to talk to. Like, for example, let's say they have been trying and they're mm -hmm. struggling and they're like, I don't want to talk to people about it. They're going to judge me. And they're kind of like looping you into there. Mm -hmm. um, meanwhile, you're like, no, dude, I'm like willing to talk. I would not judge you any which way. So right. I hope you guys are able to figure that out. That's a tough one. I'll let you know. Yeah, I think another tough one is if you say that you're still young, you can have kids. <sighs> I, I mean, we've we've read, right, that age does play a role in it. But sometimes it's not just the the that it's medical conditions, right? It's people who have had um, some kind of medication given to them. It could be so much. So it's not always about age. And I think that again gives you like a false sense of security like i'm good like i'll it'll happen eventually and it doesn't put you in a situation where you can possibly even think that something like infertility could happen to you or your partner um 
Or if you're saying this to someone who is like, for example, my age or like late 20s or mid 20s, you're you you are assuming on their behalf that they're not struggling with something or they haven't been struggling with something they haven't been trying which I think could make you feel so shitty because you're like it's not my age if only you knew it's so much more that's happening right um I think another one is um so we've talked about you're still young at least you weren't too far along you can just have another one. At least you know you can get pregnant. And I think any of the questions surrounding when are you having kids instead of if you're having kids, um, like if you are going to ask your friends that or your loved ones, maybe phrase it in a way that you're asking them rather than telling them. So asking, are you planning to have kids? Is that something you're interested in as opposed to when are you going to have kids? Because that kind of gives them more of a, a stage to, to talk to you and open up the conversation about that. Where you guys were not given the if, right? It was usually when, when your parents talked to you. Oh, yeah. 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 Pretty sure my extended family across the, the ocean thinks that there's something wrong with us because, like, we're in our 30s and we don't have kids we're not married because because back over there in like south asia and the middle east um it's i guess easier to find people it's e because families are intermingling all the time there's a lot of events so it's very easy to like eventually spot someone you find attractive start dating them hit it off with them and be like yep we're getting married but um for us we didn't grow up in a cultural way. So when we came to Canada, we were very to ourselves. We didn't mesh with the South Asian community. We didn't mesh with the um, Middle Eastern community. We were like to ourselves. So for us, we kind of grew up very to ourselves. There weren't parties. There weren't get togethers. There weren't cultural gatherings. So it's either you find someone through work or you find someone through school. And I have found neither. So that makes it a little tough, which you can't explain to people back home, right? You can't explain that to them because they will automatically think like, well, maybe you're being too picky. Maybe there are good boys out there and you're just being too picky. Um, I'm just very afraid of even having a conversation with any of, of them because, and, I, and I'm sure they're wonderful people, but it's just the concept is like, but why aren't you married and why don't you have kids? Like why, and why don't you want to have kids? Like, oh, God forbid I even tell them that I don't want to have kids. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't think infertility is even a talk in, in the cultural sense. But I really hope that our generation can kind of change things and change that conversation. That when we talk to our friends or our loved ones or our siblings or our, you know, the children that we plan to have, we create an environment where they feel safe to have opinions and situations that are not part of the norm. And we open up their minds to these things so that when it does happen, they're not like, whoa, something's wrong with me. It's more like, oh, this was told as it could be a possibility. Guess I fall under that uh, category, right? Um, is there anything else that you guys want to add on this topic um, before we close off for the night? Anything that you want to tips, guidance? Um, I, do, I do have one thing to say, and this is what Titan was saying. One thing you cannot get back is time. One thing you cannot get back is time and make any of these relationships, any of these instances of trying infertility, make those, make it count. Make mm. it count, have those discussions with the people you love. So that way you save yourself potentially years of misery, or poten potentially years of confusion. So you can't get that back. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What about you, Titan? Anything you want to say to close off the conversation? I mean, I've I've learned way more than I thought I was going to learn during this conversation. <laughs> I'm so glad. Not only not only the research research process, but the the fact that we had this conversation, hearing two other people's point of views, it even it even helped knowing that uh, somebody else in here was from a Hispanic family, so they could also see that point of view that I have as well. Um, but. Really, I would just say it's this is a very, very sensitive and personal subject. So 
if you want to help your friends or family who may be going through something like this or you think they're going through it, the best thing for you to do is just wait for them to try and open up to you and to discuss it because the, the only thing that you can be you can do for someone like that is to be there for them right so and trying to be that that's support that they need so i'm luckily enough that my not just my wife would be my support but i have friends that if i ran into this situation i, I would definitely talk to but there may be people out there that don't think they have that friend but the, the best thing for you to do is either a be there to be there for them and be open up to that person if if you if you can and yeah also try not to have your dog with you when you're doing a podcast <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to be part of it too yeah those were such great closers i also think that uh, building on what photon said is have that conversation early on with your partner especially if you know that this is something that's going to be serious you're you know you're having really strong feelings for this person definitely have those conversations early it does not take away from the romantic aspects of your relationship if anything it makes you guys stronger that you guys are able to have this mature relationship and talk about these real life things these difficult things um i i think that's great um second of all think twice before you ask questions about family planning to people because you never know what people are going through you never know how many miscarriages they've already had um and they've felt that loss you know there are people i've spoken to and the videos of people i've seen um women who have suffered miscarriages and they can describe the pain the emotional pain and the emotional burden from each of those pregnancies and each of those situations years down the road. I think I was watching a video of a 90 year old woman. Um, I, I can't remember what the situation was. It was one of those like cute videos where um, it's, it's like people describe how, uh, what makes them happy or like what keeps them living young or something like that. And uh, one of the, people that was being interviewed was this like 90 year old woman and something about kids came up and uh she said that i have three kids but i think she said she lost like two or three and she said she remembers how much it hurt her to lose these kids and she still thinks of them Aww. i think two of them were stillborn uh two of them were stillborn so like she still remembers that that is not something that you forget that is not something that people get over it's something they just choose to live with because they have no other choice they have to move on with their life so like think about these things we should all think about these things before we start asking people questions about their family planning because you don't know what stage they are in you don't know if they're getting treatment you don't know if they've already suffered a miscarriage and miscarriages are actually way more common than we think way more common than we think um and it's not something easy to go through. It's not just like a, well, you can have another one. It's traumatic. Apparently, what I've heard is the way miscarriages happen is like a, a like a blob, basically, of like blood. And like it's kind of like a, like, a, it looks like a blood clot. It'll just like plop out of you. And I think for a second, you probably think like, did I just drop the baby? Like, I, I'm sure there's like this frantic panicking that happens, but it's like this weight is just dropped from your body. And if you're not in a, at home where this happens, like, can you only imagine how that feels? Like, it's, it's terrifying. And it's really sad that there are so many jokes about it. And there's so much instant sensitivity around it. But I really want us to not be those people. I want us to be sensitive and compassionate and kind and have a lot of empathy for people who are going through family planning and recognize that this is not just a female predominant issue this affects all of us and recognize that family planning is not as easy as they make it seem as we're told as we're raised to believe it's difficult and a lot of people struggle with it so thank you 
Cage Titan. Thank you, Photon, for educating me and um, letting me into your personal lives and your personal experiences and really opening up my mind. I have a lot to think about from this conversation. And it's been such a pleasure getting to know both of you more. Thank you. Thank it's you, so man. nice. Pleasure is mine. Thank you for hosting this for us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, guys, I'm going to say goodbye to my scrumptious guests offline. Um, if you guys want to hang around, awesome. If I don't see you when I come back, I hope you all have a wonderful night. Bye, <laughs> Bye everybody. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for being here.